Hey, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, here with a playthrough of Under Falling Skies. This is a solo-only game from Czech Games Edition, and it's a dice placement game where you have these alien ships coming down to bomb your base, and you're rolling these dice and assigning them one per column to try to stop them. Now, this game does feature a campaign mode, but there's some spoilers in it, so I'm just going to show you the full basic game you can play before digging into any of that content. I'm going to quickly run through the game's setup and how to play, but if you want to skip that and go right to the alien blasting, just use the timestamps in the video. Quick disclaimer, by the way, this is a review copy. And by the way, before I go through setup, you can see this is a very vertical game, and it's not ideal for me to be filming the way I am right now, but I want you to be able to see kind of the scope of my decisions, and all the stuff you do down here is heavily influenced by where the ships are up here. So it's really tough for me to film this without kind of showing the whole thing at once. So hopefully the sideways numbers aren't too bothersome. So first I'll slide it in. You have this mothership all the way at the top and you put these five purple kind of basic enemy ships on each of the spawn points right here. But that's off the board and off where the camera can see. They'll be popping in very soon. Then you're gonna build your kind of enemy space board. It's made of four pieces. And each of these can be flipped to a harder side. And that's kind of based on how comfortable you are with the game. I'm winning somewhat consistently on the easiest level. So I'm going to uh, flip one of these to its harder side and see how that does. And they want you to do it randomly. So I'll just roll a die and we'll go one, two, three, four. If I get a five or six, I'll re-roll. And there we go. So we're gonna flip the very first one to its nastier side. Now you just have some setup down here on your main baseboard. First you pick which city you want to defend. I'm defending New York, but just to show you, this is Washington DC. You've got uh, where your little research token will start here. Some of them have a tougher additional research spot you have to fulfill, or even more than one. They'll have a special ability, unless it's Roswell, New Mexico, which is kind of like the basic tutorial one. And then they'll tell you which kind of base tiles you're going to use. In this case with New York, I've got one side of C and the other side of B. So that's going to determine all of my action spaces. They also tell me where to start my energy. I have two. I place my base health icon right here, my research token at the bottom, and my excavator on the indicated space. Besides that, I just need to have my five dice at the ready, some extra white ships that might attack me, and these two blue robot dice if they come into play. All right, now I'm gonna summarize the basics of play in the game. So this is, at its heart, a dice placement game. You're gonna roll your five dice, and then one at a time, you're gonna place them in available spaces. Now, the only available spaces are the ones that are behind your excavator going towards the surface. And once per round, you can put a die in front of your excavator to move it further and kind of unlock more building spaces. Now, the key sort of conceit of the dice placement that makes this game such a great puzzle is that whatever die you put down, the higher the number, generally the more effective the action will be on the space you put it. But the value of the die you place also controls how far any ships in the matching column move down. And whenever an enemy ship moves all the way to your city board, your base's life goes down by one, and if you go down to the skull, you lose. The other way you can lose is if the mother ship, which is going to move once at the end of every turn, gets all the way down here to this skull space. To win, you need to use these green spaces, research actions, to advance this research marker all the way up to the final space. So you're placing dice, moving ships, but there's a few other pieces that are important here. Whenever you place one of the white dice, you have to reroll every other die in your pool. So you're going to do that twice per round, unless, of course, the second white die is the last die you place. So the first phase of the game is placing all your dice and moving the matching ships. The second phase of a round is resolving all your dice in any order. And the third phase is the mothership moving down one space. And now you can see why I put it up there at the top. You'll be able to see it pretty soon. And resolving the icon to the right of its new space. And that's mostly it, except for the specifics of the action spaces. So let's get into those. First of all, at the top, you've got these anti-air guns. And those don't do anything for you. They also don't cost anything. But what they do do is they decrease the value of the die you place there by one for the alien movement. And the reason that's important is whenever the aliens land on one of these little spaces, it's going to execute an effect. So the blue arrow will send them one to the uh, right. The pink arrow will send them one to the left. This little mothership icon will move the mothership down one, although it won't activate the effect. So sometimes you actually want to do that. And probably the most important type of space, if a ship ends its turn on one of these little blast spaces with a number, that'll give you a chance to shoot them down with your aircraft spaces. 
So we can jump to those if you have dice on aircraft spaces, like if I put a six here, that means I would attack every enemy aircraft on a space equal to or less than that die's value. Or in the case of a space like this, I'd have to put two dice there, but I would add up the values. That would be every enemy on a space with a seven or less value, which doesn't even exist. So like if this guy was here and I was attacking, I would blow him up, which means he just goes back to the mothership and he'll be spawned on the next round. Now you'll see most of these action spaces have one or more of these little yellow energy symbols. That means to activate a die there, or to activate the entire kind of set of the room for two dice on one of those multi-rooms, I have to spend that much power. But it's always optional, I can just pull off a die and do no effect with it. And here, as you might guess, is a way to generate power. So if I had, for example, nine there, I could take my power up, although the max is eight. And to clarify, when a room is more than one space, you must have a die in every space. If I only did like that, this would not get to activate at all. I wouldn't gain any power. The other basic and very important type of room is alien research. If I put a die there, let's say a three, I can move this alien research token, which remember is how we win the game, onto and or through spaces whose total sum is equal to or less than the value put here. So here with a three, I can only go onto that two, but let's say that I had done a five. Now I can do the two and the three because that adds up to five. Hey, if I'd done a six, I can go all the way up to that one as well. And a quick note, you'll see some spaces have like a minus one or a plus one in a gray thing. That means that that is a modifier for the value. So like if I put a uh, die here, a six, that minus one would make it only generate five. Another basic action which I mentioned earlier is you can move your excavator forward, which is going to unlock better and better rooms. To do that, you have to place a die ahead of it. You can only do that once per turn. But the value of the die must be equal to or greater than the number of spaces the excavator has to move. And that's going to cost one power as well. You see it right on the little token there. So like this is one, two, three, four, five spaces ahead, and that's a six, so that would be fine. A five would have also been fine, but a three would not have been enough, and I couldn't place it. The last room type, which is only on some boards, is this robot room. And when you resolve a die there, you get to place one of your blue dice. Normally you can have up to two on the board, but New York's power is that you can only have one robot, but they're stronger. And you get to place this die on any available empty room, like I could do it uh, here. And you put it at an angle on the turn you place it because you can't use it. But on future turns, it basically becomes a die you can use freely. Now I still have to put a die in the same column, and if I need to, I can kick that die out and just lose the robot. But the robots let you do more stuff on your turn without moving the enemy ships. Like here, I would generate 10 power, and each time you use the robot, you just tick them down one value. So they will eventually break, and then you can build another one. And that's honestly about it. It's a pretty straightforward game. There are a few details with uh, destroying enemy ships and them spawning, and the white alien ships that can come out, but we'll get to those as they come up. So here we go, let's see if we can defend New York. Every round's gonna start with me rolling my five dice. And before I even start placing my dice, let's kind of plan out my turn. If I want to shoot some enemies, I need at least three power. And if I want to move the excavator, I need another one. So my two starting power is not going to cut it. I probably want to put two of my dice here. And then if I also want to shoot some guys, that'd be three of my dice, which would mean if I wanted to move the excavator, I could either go here with a like one or higher. Or with a five or a six, I can get them all the way down here and unlock this entire third row of buildings, including power generation that doesn't require two dice. That's great. So I'm definitely looking towards using a five or six to move that. Which means I wouldn't get a robot the first turn, and New York gives me a bonus. My robots are stronger. They have one more value when they do actions, but so it goes. Look at the enemy ship in this column. A five would get it on a mothership move. A six would get it there. So I guess I want to do the six. So I'm going to take my single six and I'll move the excavator. Now besides that, I'd love to get some power and then shoot some guys down. So like those three spaces. And then I guess the anti-aircraft is my only option. But I'd love to get the enemies on attack spaces. So I need a one on the anti-aircraft space to get this guy to go here, but then I won't be able to blow anybody up anyway, so I guess I can just use a higher value and not worry about it. Here I need a four, which I don't have yet. Here I need a five, which I do have, so I should probably go ahead and place that before I reroll anything. And then this guy would need to move three to be on that, but because the only option available is the anti-aircraft, I really need a four for that. So except for the five, nothing's doing quite what I want at the moment. I'm sorry, I forgot to actually move that guy. So yeah, let's go ahead and put the five here. That'll get me halfway to generating some power. And this guy's coming down. And uh, I've got a risky move. I'm going to go ahead and get my plane set up with the other five. 
That brings this guy to that blue arrow and puts him over here. And that gives me a five attack. Now, super low odds, but after I place one of these white dice, I'm gonna re-roll. And if I get a four, I would get both this guy and this guy in destroyable spaces. It's probably not gonna happen, but hey, why not take the chance? Now, unfortunately, I can't get that guy in a destruction space at all, so let's just uh, do the two and have him only move a single space because of the anti-aircraft. I re-roll this. If it's a four, it's awesome. No. But it does mean they only move one more space. So both those guys are going to get picked up by the mothership. I'll show you how that goes when it happens. All right, now I resolve my stuff. I'm going to spend one power to move the excavator all the way up here. And then I'll get six powers. So I'm up to seven. Now, <laughs> the question is, do I really want to spend three power just to stop a single ship? Because I don't have to use this. I think the answer is no. That was just kind of a bad round for attacking. Now the mothership moves down. Because it reached these guys, they get picked up. It activates the effect, which is going to push my excavator back one space. Not too bad. And then you take all the ships that are on the mothership. This is from being destroyed or being picked up like they just were. And you fill in these little spawn spots. First, you want to fill columns that have no enemies. So here it's just going to be like that. Now, it gets a bit more complicated when you have more ships because then you're going to uh, spawn where the other ship on that column is the furthest away. And if you have white ships, the purple ones go before the white ones. There's a few kind of simple rules, but we don't need them yet. All right, here we go. And by the way, I might want to get a ship to go on a mothership move space this round because that is a two white ship spawn spot. And that's uh, pretty terrible because white ships uh, don't even exist unless you let them spawn. All right, so look at my actions this turn. I definitely want to blow up things successfully this time. I might want to start researching. I probably don't need power. I definitely want to get a robot going since New York gives me a bonus with them. Let's see, right off the bat, I could get an amazing robot, and that would move this guy right to the mothership, avoiding that nasty spot I don't want to have. For other guys, uh, if I use the three with a minus one from the anti-aircraft, I could get him to get blown up. A three would get this guy to a nice space. Maybe, hmm, I could research with it. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not actually there yet. <laughs> but let's see, a three plus one would be a four, which would only get me a single spot. That's not really worth it. I could go here and move the excavator up to. That seems pretty good. Yeah, let me do that, and he's going to come right here. Mm hmm, if I did a six here... I know I was thinking about using it over there, but that would get this guy on a destruction space and have the airplanes ready to blow him up, so I could definitely get both those guys. Yeah, let's try for that. Hopefully we can get a uh, mothership move somewhere else. And interesting, if I put a one here for the anti-aircraft gun, that guy wouldn't move at all, which means he would also get blown up. Is that what I want to do? Yeah, I kind of like that. And then, I mean, if I got another six, that'd be cool. But I guess I might just have to deal with the two white ships. I can do uh, this to get me some more power after I spend a bunch. And now let's see what I get. A four would be fine because I could blow them up. A one, I could blow them up. A six, the mothership would move. Any of those would be good. A five, that's none of those things. Although I will get a good robot out of it. Oh, I guess I could. Oh, no, I want the robot. I need to start researching and the robot will be a good one for that. So he skips past everything I wanted, unfortunately. All right, let's go ahead and uh, excavate first. Any aircraft you can just take off, they don't do anything. Let's go ahead and blow everybody up. That'll take uh, three power. So three of the five go back to the board to be spawned next time. I get four power back because of the minus one. And I'm going to spend one of it to get a robot with value four because of the minus one there. I can put him anywhere I want. I'm feeling pretty good about power right now, so let's put him right here. Uh, so that's going to be a 5 when I use him the first time because of the plus 1, and then New York's ability makes him a 6. So he'll uh, bump me up 3 research spots uh, next turn for free, basically. Well, except for the 2 power. Here's the nasty thing, the mothership's coming down, and that's putting out 2 white ships. So now we can kind of see the full spawning rules. Uh, first, you're going to fill spots that don't have anybody in that column, and purples fill them first. And then extra ships will go to columns with people, but farther away first. In this case, it doesn't matter, though, because we just have people everywhere. And that means now for these columns, we're going to double move, which is not great. Okay, here we go. Some lower values this time. Oh, and my robot rotates. He's ready to research. Now, I want to note real quick that I love, love, love killing white ships, because once you blow them up, they don't come back again until the mothership spawns them. So very important to take care of them. If they get down and attack your base, they just go right back to the uh, mothership and spawn again. you got to blow them up when you can. Which is making me think a 1 would be great in uh, this column, maybe on the fighter jets, and I could use the gray one, because that would put both of these ships where I could shoot them. 
And I honestly don't care too much if this guy gets down and does one damage if I can take out that other white ship. What would that need? A five. I do have a five. Oh, man, but... Okay, maybe I could use the gray one and the white five. So we'll start some air attack here. Uh, let's see. That's a four, so I need to get at least a three here to kind of finish it up. These guys will move into the kill zone. And then again, I'll do a five here in a second. Although, what do I want to do with it? Oh, I guess I could also attack there. Wait, so... I don't need the one, do I? The five would take care of it. I mean, I still want to do the one, but yeah, okay. What do I do with the one then? <laughs> I mean, I can still put it there, just one. Oh no, I can't even put it there, I just realized. That's not unlocked yet. So that would get me zero power generation, and that wouldn't move them enough. Maybe I'll just re-roll, because even a two would be okay here. Is there anything else I definitely want to do? I don't have a two for that guy. I guess if I was going to do power generation there. I mean, honestly, I want to get this. A three. Could do that, and that would get him in a danger zone. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, I'm sorry, I moved them without actually doing anything. So let's just go ahead and do that to make it legal. All right, and now I don't love my other options, so let's go ahead and do our plan with this. So this guy's one away from hitting us. But that guy's right where we want him. Rerolling these. Two and a three. Oh, two would get him. Oh, darn, it didn't excavate at all. Although I still could with a three, couldn't I? One, two. No, no, I would need a four. Yeah, by the way, the blue doesn't stop you from putting something. You still have to put a die in each column. Yeah, so let's put the two here for no effect. But it'll get that guy down to being killed. And I'll reroll this. Hopefully, I'll get something high. One, two, three, four, five. Darn, I can't excavate. I don't think I need to make another robot. But if I would have the mothership move again, which would skip moving my excavator back, I'm not too worried about that yet. So let's do this and have him uh, slip over to that column instead. Alrighty, so that one does nothing. That one does nothing. That one does nothing. A lot of uh, nothing this time. But here we blow up everybody with a four for no energy cost. And the white ships go away until they spawn again, which is beautiful. Yeah, so very nice. We almost completely cleared the board there. And then we're finally going to research, thank God, because that is what you need to do for the game. Remember, this one is plus one, and then plus one from the robot, so that's two power. And two, three, one, that adds up to six. And he ticks down to three for next time. And then this guy, for another power, just does another three. So, pretty decent advance there. But now the mothership comes down and pushes our excavator back to again. And if it had been pushed back to the robot or further, I would have lost that die. And then simple enough spawning here, they just go to the open columns. So definitely going to take a damage here. I can just put a six there and not even worry about it. Right, but let's go ahead and roll. Need to get some more power, and I want to get my excavator moving again. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I could go crazy with it. One, two, three, four, five now. One, two, three, four would get me there. So I could excavate to there with a four. I like that, I think. And in that case, I probably want to get some power with these. And actually, the two and the three I have would get both these guys on kill zones if I put the six there. Sounds good to me. So, uh, two for that one, three for that. Boom, boom. I get the six here, which will... I'm only generating... Huh, I'm actually going to lose power this turn, but it's okay. I'll blow up almost everybody. After we roll this, let's see what we get. A five. Um, I could get my robot stronger. Or I could make him move less. Yeah, none of those matter. I just need to get the excavator out here so I can get access to better places. So this guy hits us, we lose one, he goes back to the mothership to spawn next time. Oh wait, did I just totally forget to move this guy six? Alright, so we get five power, but it's going to be gone in a second. One to get the excavator all the way down here. Three to blow up a bunch of people. You all but one of the ships left on the board. Um, and then I will use my robot. So that will be two power. And it was a three, plus one, plus one, that'll be five. So nice, we get two spots. And then sure, I'll spend a power to get a four value robot. I can just pick this up. Um, do I want to go here? No, I guess, I guess, oh, I could go, no, I guess those are the same. Yeah, let's go here for now. I just got to generate some power faster this next turn. Okay, then the mothership moves down, and that is a damage to my base. But I'm managing the enemy ships pretty well, so I'm feeling all right so far. Need to keep getting my research going, though. All right. All right so I really want to blow this guy up, which means that three would be perfect. 
Oh, and the funny thing is I could put it on the ship space, and oh, but it costs so much. I'd much rather get like a four here and pay uh, no, wow, no energy? Yeah, that'd be great. But let's see, a four would have that guy jump to this column, although if I activate this column first, it's not as big of a deal. Oh, and a three would actually get the excavator over there. I kind of love that. So sure, let's try. Oh, wait, no, that's right. I wanted to shoot. No, no, I was going to use a different ship face. Okay, there. Oh, wait, if I do a six for this one, it'll go down to a five and I'll blow up that guy too. Yes, I'm not even going to look at any other options for that. There we go. So I'm set for a five attack. I can get most of these guys. Yeah, I mean, the five would get that guy and I could put it on... Wait, was that a one? Yeah, I can put it on power generation, which is exactly what I need right now. So there, beautiful. And I could do one more and get that guy too. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it doesn't really matter that much, I guess, but it can't hurt. Yeah, sure, let's do it. All right, let's see what this last one comes up with. A six. Lots of power, and he won't uh, do anything negative. So yeah, th well, do I need that much power? I'm only spending three. I'm getting six, I'll be at four, so that would uh, put me above the max. But I guess, what else am I going to do with it? So sure, let's go ahead. Yeah, in retrospect, I kind of wish I had uh, saved a bigger die there and I could have researched again. Oh well. Alright, so way too much power generation. Let's uh, spend one to get my excavator there. So, very close to having all my actions unlocked. The big one is this huge research one here. It's going to help me uh, jump up the track quickly. Um, here we get a free five attack that literally blows up everybody except this one. Um, we'll generate six power. And then spend two of it to get six research. This guy's down to a three. And that perfectly gets us up there. Nice. We are slightly more than halfway, although you can see the values are very high at the end. And then this guy gets us way above max power, but that's okay. And we do have a white ship coming, so it's going to go in the same column as the guy that's already on the board. And there's no beautiful perfect shot here. This guy would get shot on a one or a four, this guy on a two. But again, the white ship bothers me more. I might just let this one uh, come down and attack us. But a two would have the mothership go. I don't really want that to happen. So let's see, I have a very good fighter jet space unlocked now. I could use even a weak die there and still get a bunch of people. Like if I put a four here, it would be a five attack and that guy would come down and get shot by it. And actually, let's see, if I put a four in this column, he would come down to a shooting space. This guy would jump over. And then what would I need? Another four to get him? Huh. Anyway, I think maybe like that. Kind of like this idea. And then, wait, did I need the four for the shooting the other guy? I did. I did need the four. Darn it. Well, the shot is more important, I think. Let's go ahead and do a research. So that guy goes there, and this guy jumps over there. Okay, now I want to place a white and hopefully get a four for that. Although they're all in four spaces, so I guess a three would be enough. I just wouldn't move the guy where I want. Where should I put this one? I'm already going to attack. I guess I could just do something like that. Actually, that would be fine, right? Oh yeah, and that guy would actually get shot, so that's a beautiful move. Oh, and I did get a four! <laughs> so the question is, do I want to use a one or not? So the four would definitely go there, but should I use the one first? Do I want a one? I mean, I'm going to get a new robot. Yeah, so honestly, I'll put the four here and just see what comes up, I think. Got a four. Um, all right. I mean, I could put it here and just not have to pay two power and get a weaker robot. Either way, he's not going to get shot. So sure, I'll give myself the option. All right, so we'll pay one for the excavator. It's almost to the bottom. Uh, let's go ahead and pay two to blow everybody with a five or less up, which is my white, and that guy, and that guy, and that guy. Very nice. And I'll use the robot before I decide which one I want to get a new robot with. So that's two power, and he's a five with the bonuses. Oh, crud. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I guess a five. Oh, this is totally a waste. I didn't realize. Yeah, okay, so let's not do that. Because there's a one in front of us and then a six. I didn't even pay attention to that. So I'll just use the single power to get me there. And then it's a waste otherwise. I can still replace the robot. This one would spend two power. But get him to where he's actually strong enough to get over that six. 
yeah, let's have to get some more power next time. So I'll just uh, keep him where he is. But, uh, oh, wait, I'll put him here. <laughs> it's clearly way better. It's the exact same thing, except for one less power. Now, the excavator is about to go back one space, but that won't cover him up, so we're okay. Yeah, and this one I won't use. Yes, yeah, so as I said, here it comes. That gets pushed back. These guys are all hanging out there. And I'm feeling pretty good here. If I can just get my research going, I need to unlock this space. And there are no more auto-excavator move back, so like a three would get it there, a four would get it there. Other one is great for me. Ooh, some high, high numbers. That's a five that's safe. That's also a five that's safe. Um, oh, and that's a six that's safe? What could I do with a six? I could get the excavator down. I could do a research and get past that six and not uh, have to use the robot or also use him. Hmm, that seems pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I think I think I want to do that. So there he goes. Let's see, that's the plus one ship, as long as I can get some power. So if I put a five there... Oh, no, that's not the right column. Could put a five there, but it's not strong enough to actually shoot that guy down. Let's see, what if I... Yeah, I still think this is okay. What if I do a five here? And then, oh, wait, I can wait until I do something with that column before I uh, move him double. Well, let's do a five here to get me more power, and this guy will be right there. Actually, nothing else is appealing me too much, so let's... Let's do a five white so I get a re-roll. And this guy will jump over to there. Four and a five, huh. See, the four would get that guy killed. I don't know if I would use it for anything. I could go one space. I really want to get... Oh, darn, I already cut myself off from the possibility of getting this as far as I want. Actually, yeah, this works out perfectly. If I do a four here, that guy will be there. And then a five here, that guy will be there. I'll clear the entire board, yes. So for the four, I don't know, a robot I'm not going to use. And for the five, an excavator move. Why not? Oh, wait, oh, wait, I, I didn't actually do an attack, did I? Or was it going to attack? Oh, no, I did. Right here. Okay, we're fine. All right, so first things first. Oh, I didn't move this guy. And I moved that guy. Jeez. Let's actually move the aliens, Mike. Yes, I'm wiping out everybody except that person. Awesome. Um, okay, I'll generate four power. Gets me to a safe spot for the moment. And I'll move the excavator for one. Not quite where I want him, though. I'll shoot for two. Clear them out. Um, I'll have the robot. It costs one power. That'll be a research of five. Or no, six with both bonuses. So we get over the spot. That would be another six. I'm going to actually just save the power. Oh, no, no. I can't save the power because I'm going to lose a research spot in a second. See, so, yeah, I'll spend one to move. I only stop there. And then in a second, it's going to move me down one. But it'll only be another three I have to spend. And no point in doing this, because it would be a three value anyway. Darn, I'm low on power again. Okay, mothership moves. I lose research. Those guys all queue up to attack again. Here we go. Almost to the end. Maybe I should have played on one difficulty level higher in retrospect. Okay, okay, okay. Six would get that guy right there and get me six power. Oh, that seems too good to pass up. Wait, do I want to place anything else, though? Because that's a white. And this guy is the furthest along. A five would get him perfectly situated for a kill. And there's a five coming up on the research if I reach it. Yeah, so I think that's the right call. There he goes. Anything else I want to do now? That guy needs exactly a four. I could get more research. Or get my robot back up to snuff. Oh, that's a six, though. Am I actually going to have a six to attack? Yeah, that seems unlikely, so maybe I shouldn't worry about that. How about a two here, though? Well, that guy's got two values. I probably don't need to worry about him yet. This one would be a five to blow him up. Yeah, you know, I don't love any of the other values for now, so let's get the six power. Move this guy down and reroll. Hmm, fours and fives. I definitely want to move this to free up that research spot. And then I kind of want to get my robot in there. So I could do like a four here. Oh yeah, and that gets him right where I want him, so that works fine. Now I need to actually shoot some people, right? Yeah, he's on a six, so I could put the five there and that would work out. I mean, I wouldn't hit the middle guy, but that's okay. 
Yeah, I don't really want a four for him, so let's do that first to uh, get the reroll. And of course, I still get a four, so he's going to move the mothership in extra space. Uh, which means it'll do a research, which whereas it wouldn't have done anything. Oh, wait, I could do, yeah. You know, I think it's worth it. I'm going to uh, do the AA gun and have him do nothing. All right, I liked that pretty well. Let's get my six power first, because, man, I need it. And then let's go ahead and shoot everybody down. Uh, just these two guys are surviving. Um, the excavator is all the way in its home. It's never leaving, so we have everything available. I did not get a new robot yet. Uh, okay, so for one power, I get to do a five, which is just going to be a three. Yeah, both of them are going to be a little bit underused here, because this guy's giving me five as well, but also only for three. And the motion moves down for nothing. Oh, man, this is definitely looking like a win. And you get five, one, and then 12. And I mean, this by itself with like one of those should be pretty easy to do it. I can probably just go ham here if I roll big enough numbers and not even worry about the enemy ships. I mean, yeah, let's calculate. So if I got like a four and a six here, that'd be 13. I just need the power for it. So that'll get me over the hump up there, which means I just need like, um, I don't know, a five on one of these and then a big die for a power there. And actually, a four would do it here, right? That's seven power. So we need to get a five here. Oh, no, I actually need a six because it's minus one, huh? Maybe I hold off and see if I get more high numbers. Yeah, I don't think I'm attacking at all. So let's do that. And, oh, man. Okay, that. And have him move really far. I'm kind of going all or nothing here. Okay, just need big numbers. Big numbers. Okay, that's sort of kind of it. I need the four there, that would get me the five, and then no, I needed a six for the power. Wait, wait, what if I did the four here? That would get me five power, which I think is how much I needed. And that guy would move the mothership down, that's fine. And then I think that... I think is it? Did I get this right? I guess we'll find out in a second, and then uh, my one... I mean, yeah, I know he's really going to be helpful, so let's just have the guy not move. All right, if I calculate right, I win here. That's five power. I'm up to seven. Um, and then this research gets me over that hump. Oh, and I didn't even need this one. I thought I needed enough power for the robot, but that 13, I uh, guess 10 plus three at four power, uh, gets me up there. Oh, yeah, so that was even easier than I thought. So there you go. <laughs> Under Falling Skies, we got a victory. Now again, that's just the basic play of the game. There's also a really cool campaign mode, but I'll talk about my feelings on that front in my review. I don't want to spoil anything, but it's definitely really cool. Check out my thoughts by clicking on the link that just popped up. Good gaming, everybody. Hope you had fun. I'll see you at the next stop.